everybody. I'm Cherie. Welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a great day. And uh, today we're going to do a, a devotional on Remember. And it's going to be going over um, the loss of loved ones and so on. And uh, if you like this video or any of them, give them a thumbs up and subscribe if you want. Uh, we do all different kinds of videos on here, so I'm sure there'll be something that you like. Um, but anyway, you'll hear Oscar in the background probably. He's in there talking to the kitty cat. So let me flip this around and we'll get going on our devotional. Hang on just a second. All right. Now it is on Remember. And it says, do, do, do. Out of Romans 12, 15, out of the NIV. And chapter 12 is a great chapter to read if you want to read the whole chapter. But it says on here, uh, rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn. In the first few days and weeks of losing a loved one, there is an amazing amount of support and love expressed. And while people don't forget, they do get on with their lives, and slowly that support dwindles. If you have lost a loved one, you will know that any mention of that person is appreciated. You will never forget your loved one, and it means a lot when others acknowledge that they are thinking about them. Or about how hard it must be for you. If you think of someone who has lost a close friend, family member, or pet, whether it was recent or some time ago, support them in prayer and let them know you care. And the act of kindness is check in with someone who has lost a loved one recently. And I added pet in there because it is hard for people who have lost friends, pets, and family members. I tell you, pets are in our family and they're a member of our family and it's very hard when you lose a pet so always remember don't just shrug that off and take it lightly if someone loses a pet especially when they're very close to that pet you know they need support too so always give them a call a card you know just be in support of everyone who has lost any of these things um, even you know loss of a job is hard on people but this mostly is talking about mourning of people and I say pets and you know it's hard I know we've all lost loved ones husbands wives family members friends and it is hard you know the support does dwindle away after a while and um, sometimes it's not there for very long at the start but I know when I lost my husband my work family was very supportive of me I don't know what I would have done without them they were very, very supportive of me. They were right there, the number one, I'd say, of support I got was from my uh, work family. And, uh, you know, that's just the way it is. You know, some family members are supportive of you and some aren't. Some don't know what to say, so they don't do anything. And I understand it's hard for people, you know, they just don't get it. Um, they do, but they just don't know how to express it or, you know, it's hard for them to or... You know, maybe they've lost someone and talking to you about your loss reminds them of theirs and that makes it hard on them. You know, um, there's a lot of boxes to check there. But if you know of someone who's lost a loved one recently, please be there for them. Give them a phone call and a, a message, a text message, a messenger message. Just let them know you're thinking about them. Even in a Facebook post or something, you know, thinking of you and probably other people will make comments on that post too and they'll know that they're thinking of them that might be a way for other people to say okay I'll just jump on this post and let them know that I am thinking about them I just don't know how to do it on my own I'm not good at that you know but uh, anyway that is our um, uh, that is our um, the, the, the devotion for the day so uh, anyway I hope that you all have a great day and I hope that you remember to live, love, laugh, and laugh some more because laughter is the best medicine. And uh, I will be back on here soon, hopefully, Lord's willing, to do another devotional. We're already on the 20th of the month, so we just got a little bit left to go for the month. <clears throat> but I thought this was pretty good on random acts of kindness. And uh, I don't know what I'll do in April, if I'll do anything daily or not. But I am pretty proud of myself for keeping up with this having something posted every day in March um, since I've started this. So I think um, I think that's pretty good that we've all been here. I'm not bragging on myself. I'm just proud of myself. Um, I'm just, because uh, it's hard to stick with things, especially for me sometimes, 
but I do. I, I'm trying real hard, so <clears throat> it's not that hard. It's just doing it, and uh, you know, I'm not a Bible scholar, so I, sometimes I don't have a lot to throw in there. Um, my sister-in-law asked me to, she'd like to know about the Palm Sunday, the Good Friday, and all that stuff, and uh, I'm just not real good at teaching some harder things, but it's not really that hard. If you read the story of Jesus' death and the week leading up to that, it's pretty self-explanatory. And you can Google and find out all kinds of information on it. So, you know, it's easy to have somebody tell you about it. But if you study it and read on it and dig through the scriptures, that's how you're supposed to get it. You know, you get it from yourself, not from somebody else telling you. Um, you know, teaching stuff is a big responsibility. And I'm very careful in what I do on here because I don't want to mislead anyone. I don't want to say anything wrong. And I wouldn't intentionally. Uh, but it's a big responsibility. But I've always said on here, you know, even on things that I buy, that I, I have on here, bottles and things, most of the time I don't share a link because I'm like, if you look for that Bible, if you look for a study Bible, upon looking, you might find one you like a whole lot better than the one I had, and you would have never known. So I think it's good for us to do our own digging. Um, you know, get in your Bible and just go down a rabbit hole and just start looking, looking, looking. Um, a lot of that week uh, fulfilled uh, scriptures from um, the Old Testament even. So, you know, uh, we might read through it and see what we can come up with. But I'm not a big scholar on stuff like that. But I might try to do something on here. But um, we all have to we all have to try to, you know, learn things on our own too. Don't just depend on other people, not me, not anybody. Uh, you might have preachers on here you trust. I mean, I trust Charles Stanley 100%. Uh, I know he's gone now, but I mean, I still watch his shows and go over his devotionals and things like that. But I trust him 100%. I think he would never, ever, ever say anything wrong, and he'd been in it so long, he knew it inside and out. And I trust what he teaches, you know. Uh, David Jeremiah is another one that I trust. You know, there's just certain people you know you can trust to learn from. But you also have to do the footwork uh, to do it yourself. Go through the Bible. Learn. Uh, mark up your Bible. Things that you've learned. Make notes in a notebook. Um, you know, just different things like that. I started uh, marking up. He's in there saying in the shower. Can you hear him? I don't know if you can hear him or not. It's funny. <laughs> Kitty, get each you hear <laughs> But anyway, I started making notes on... Um, the week, you know, leading up to Jesus' crucifixion, um, and the few days after that, and on. But, um, anyway, we might go over it, but I want you to go over it, too, for yourselves, so that you all know what the Bible says, and you might get stuff out of it. I don't. It might speak to you in a different way than it does me, and that's why it's good for all of us to go through the Bible on our own, too. Because we're all in different places in our lives. And it might something might resonate with me and not you, or vice versa, you and not me. So, you know, it's good to share what we learn and what we know. And uh, anyway, that was just a little bit of a tidbit of information there. But we might do that later on. But it's not going to be a real in-depth, probably. But we'll go over it. We'll skim the surface. And uh, you all can be reading up on it, too. I believe it's Matthew chapter 26, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but you can read around that story uh, leading up to that and afterward. And that might tell you a lot about it, about Easter, since it's coming up. So, anyway, I hope you all have a great day. And um, I hope that you get into your Bible and study. Get you a devotional. And I'm sure you can find stuff at Goodwill and all kinds of these other places. I get stuff all over the place on eBay. A lot of my stuff, very seldom anymore do I buy anything brand new. Now, I might every now and then, but it's always cheap. <laughs> but I don't mind getting things secondhand as long as they're in pretty good condition, you know. But, uh, yeah, Goodwill, I know I take stuff. I take Bibles and you hear them. That's it. Dog and cat chasing each other. Uh, but you can buy good stuff. I take stuff to Goodwill all the time that's good. Uh, Bibles included, devotionals, all that stuff. 
And some people say, you know, well, if you give to Goodwill, you know, you're giving to the CEO, make so much money, blah, blah, blah. Well, he probably does. I don't know. But people work there, and they need a job. So if I quit bringing and everybody else quits bringing, they ain't going to have no job. So Jesus will make sure the money goes to where it needs to go, the stuff goes to where it needs to go, and everybody will get a blessing from it. That's how I look at it. So uh, anyway, I love you all, and you all take care, and I will be back on here, Lord's willing, for your devotional tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.